The EDSS is a quantitative scoring system for disability in multiple sclerosis. In this video, I will summarize scoring of the EDSS and talk about the advantages and disadvantages of the system. Let's have some fun, or at least as much fun as we could reasonably have talking about EDSS. I'm Brandon Bieber, and I post informational videos about multiple sclerosis every Wednesday, so if you're interested, please click subscribe and ring that bell. Now, I should warn you that this video about EDSS is really just a summary. If you're looking for detailed technical information about how to score the EDSS, then this is just a brief summary. I will put some resources in the description box below. I actually used to be a rater in clinical trials, so I have quite a bit of experience doing this. In case anyone is wondering, Yes, there are real blinded, objected raters of the AEDSS in clinical trials, and in virtually every case, I was in fact blind to whether the patient was receiving treatment or placebo. The one exception to that is I remember walking in a patient's room and she had disseminated shingles all over her body, so I knew she very likely was receiving the active drug, in this case, alemtuzumab, which is known to cause shingles. Uh, but just to let you know, you know, these little booklets from Neurostatus Scoring that score the EDSS. This tiny little booklet is $11, and the CD-ROM that gives you instructions on how to score the EDSS is $170. And I would bore you with the details of the EDSS if I were to go through all the details. So I'll just give you a little bit of a summary. Now, just as an overview, this is a quantitative scale of disability in MS. It's used primarily in research and in clinical trials, though some neurologists you do use it on a routine basis. It was developed by John Kurtzke, and the scoring is from zero to 10, zero being the least affected to 10 being deceased due to multiple sclerosis. Now, just to give you a brief summary, the EDSS of zero would refer to absolutely no symptoms or no problems. EDSS of zero to 1.5 would suggest uh, essentially no restriction in walking ability whatsoever. A marathon runner could have an EDSS of 1.5. An EDSS of two or three would generally refer to fairly mild disability, although there are different ways to have an EDSS of two, 2.5, or three. An EDSS of four would refer to moderate disability. At EDSS six, a cane or some sort of assistance is required to walk 100 meters. And at 6.5, uh, support on both sides, such as a walker, is required to walk. Now, the way the scoring works is very complicated, and it's different depending on the level of disability. For lower disability, an EDSS zero to four, the person is fully ambulatory, meaning essentially they can walk 500 meters or more without rest or aid. So they're up and about most of the day. Many of these people are working, for instance. And the scoring is based on the individual functional systems, which I will describe on the next slide. Once you get beyond that, the functional systems no longer really matter and scoring is based on different factors. For instance, from DSS 4.5 to 5.5, the person is still able to walk, but has limited walking distance and the scoring is based on that distance. From EDSS 5 to 7.5, excuse me, it should be 6 to 7.5, the EDSS is essentially based on mobility device. What do you need in order to move around? Once you get to DSS of eight, you are really not able to walk. And so the scoring is based on function of the arms and other functions. And at DSS 10, the patient is deceased due to multiple sclerosis. Now the functional systems are basically different neurological symptoms in the body. And they are the pyramidal system, which is motor strength, the cerebellar system, which is fine motor control, brainstem functions, such as eye movements, swallowing and speaking, sensory function, the ability to feel things in the body, bowel and bladder function, you know, constipation, incontinence, that sort of thing, visual function, the function of seeing things, and cerebral function, which is cognition and fatigue. And just to give a few examples, these are the grades zero through six of the visual function. So zero is normal. One would be a small scotoma. A scotoma is a small visual defect, usually due to optic neuritis in this case, or acuity in the worse eye of 20 over 30 or worse. Uh, so 20 over 20 is normal vision. 20 over 30 means at 30, at 20 feet, 
you can see what a normal person should be able to see at 30 feet. Grade two would mean the worst eye has lower acuity of 20 over 30 to 20 over 59. Grade three would be a larger scotoma, a moderate visual field deficit. A visual field deficit is a deficit in the ability to see with both eyes in a certain area in your visual field, such as the left lower quadrant or left side. Or the worst eye has visual acuity of 2060 to 2099. Grade four would be a marked visual field deficit, such as not able, being able to see to one side, or the worst eye has an acuity of 20 over 100 to 20 over 200. Grade five would be the worst eye has acuity worse than 20 over 200, in other words, legally blind in that eye, or the better eye has acuity less than or equal to 20 over 60, and grade six essentially means blind in one eye, and the good eye is worse than 20 over 60. To give one other example, these are the cerebral functional system grades. So zero would be normal, one would be mild fatigue, two would be mild cognitive dis dysfunction or moderate to severe fatigue, three would be moderate cognitive impairment, four would be marked cognitive impairment, and five would be dementia. And there are definitions of each of these categories, but I won't go into too much detail. Now, when you take all of the functional systems, you put them together and then you create a total score. So for instance, an EDSS of zero would be normal. EDSS of one would mean grade one in one functional system. 1.5 would be grade one in greater than one functional system, so two or more functional systems. EDSS of two would be grade two in one functional system. EDSS of 2.5 is grade two in two functional systems. EDSS three would be grade three in one functional system or grade two in three to four functional systems. And I won't go into every step, I'll skip ahead a little bit. So grade four would be a grade four in one functional system. Uh, 4.5 means you can walk 300 meters, but not 500 meters. EDSS of five means you can only walk 200 meters. EDSS of 5.5 means you can walk 100 meters. So once you get to EDSS of six, you actually need assistance in order to walk 100 meters. And at 6.5, you need some kind of bilateral assistance, such as a walker or two sticks, just to walk 20 meters. And at DSS 7, you can't even walk greater than 5 meters, even with assistance. At 7.5, you can only take a few steps. And at 8.0, you need a wheelchair or scooter, but have effective use of the arm and can do many things by yourself. At 8.5, you have, quote, some effective use of the arms. At, at DSS-9, you can communicate and eat, but can't really effectively use the limbs. And at DSS-9.5, you can't communicate or eat. And 10 is deceased due to multiple sclerosis. Uh, so what are the advantages of the EDSS? Well, one, it's very well established and well recognized. Uh, for instance, if you said, oh, this patient has a DSS around three or a DSS around six, I would kind of know what you're talking about. We've seen it in so many clinical trials. Uh, we know exactly what people are talking about when they talk about EDSS. It has relatively good inter-rater reliability. There is some subjectivity to it, but especially at the higher steps, if I evaluate the person and someone else evaluates the person, we're going to get a very similar score, if not the exact same score. Also, because of the objectivity and the discreteness of the scale, it creates a barrier to approving new drugs based on very trivial results in clinical trials. Like, for instance, let's say a drug improves walking speed by 3%. You know, that may not be clinically meaningful. It may not be worth the risks of the drugs. So the EDSS sort of forces the drug manufacturers to show a real and meaningful benefit. Also, because we're using the same measure in so many clinical trials, it allows us to compare modern clinical trials to older clinical trials. But what about the disadvantages? Well, there's a lot of subjectivity. For instance, when I was doing the exams, it's not like I was taking the patient and actually having them walk 500 meters to make sure they were fully ambulatory. I would just ask the patient, and there's a lot of subjectivity, and you, know, you have to explain what a meter is and, and estimate things like fatigue and you know, other things can be quite subjective. Because of that, at lower levels, DSS fluctuates wildly. 
uh, not just based on one rater to the next rater, but also based on relapses and day-to-day -day fluctuation in symptoms. You know, some people with MS may be able to walk a mile on a good day, but only 100 meters on a bad day. So your EDSS can go from 1 to 3.5, back to 2, back to 3, very easily. At higher levels, DSS is extremely stagnant and doesn't really move around a lot. For instance, let's say you have imbalance and use a cane to walk. Well, your DSS is 6.0. But let's say you have progressive multiple sclerosis and you worsen over the years. So after one year, you can only walk 800 meters and then maybe 400 meters and then 200 meters. This may be very functionally limited, but your EDSS is still 6.0. Also, the EDSS is very nonlinear. The difference between an EDSS of 1 and 2 can be very, very small. But the difference between 6 and 6.5 is often enormous. So one change does not mean the same as another change in a different patient. Also, the scoring is strongly dominated by function of the lower, lower extremities, particularly at the lower or middle levels. For instance, let's say you have someone who is highly functioning, works 80 hours a week as a CEO, but walks with a cane due to imbalance versus someone who walks with a cane but also has dementia and blindness, they both have the exact same score of 6.0. And so it really doesn't tell you that much. And increasingly, we understand that cognitive function and fatigue and factors other than lower extremity function are very important and meaningful. And because the EDSS is so discreet and difficult to change, sometimes it's very difficult to show a benefit in clinical trials. And often drug companies will exclude people with higher disability in their clinical trials because it's very hard to show a difference. Because if you have an EDSS of six, it's probably gonna be six at the end of the trial as well in many, many cases. Anyways, if you have any questions about DSS, please post in the comments below or if you have suggestions for future videos. Thank you for your time.